Okay, welcome everyone. This is Pam Smith, Associate Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. And welcome back to our Back to School webinar. Uh, I know you've been getting, I hope you've been getting our newsletters that we send out monthly, but we decided to go ahead and bring back the webinar for the very beginning of the school year and we may have some others during the year. And as Randy Lee has stated before, he sent the PowerPoint out yesterday or early this morning. He sent it out this morning. We've only added a couple of slides since then. We added a welcome slide that we'll be looking at and a slide at the very end about the Every Student Succeed Act feedback session. So you'll see that in, in a few minutes. But um, I'm so glad to, I'm going to go to the next slide. I just want to say, um, I am way at the uh, end, sorry. On behalf of Caitlin Dooley, our uh, deputy superintendent, I know she wants to give a big shout out for welcome to the new school year. And she also is excited to announce that we are merging our curriculum and instruction team with the Georgia Virtual School Team. This is going to provide important opportunities for us to engage learners, both adult and youth, through face-to-face, -face, hybrid, and online approaches. And you know, as you know, the Georgia Virtual School, we're real proud that they perform so well, those students do, on the end of course test as they participate in those online opportunities. And I want to welcome to that team is Dr. Keith Osborne, the Associate Superintendent for Georgia Virtual Learning. He comes to us from Jeff Davis County, and he's had experience as a teacher, a technology director, a media specialist, Special Programs Director and Interim Superintendent and has over 26 years of experience in education. So welcome Dr. Osborne. He's not with us today either. He's at the data conference. So uh, welcome and uh, a big shout out to Dr. Osborne. And there's his email address if you have any questions for him. Now I want to get into, before we get started with our content areas and programs, uh, I want to talk, and I don't know if Deborah White is on yet, but I want to start talking about our fall conference in September. As you can see, you can register now for the 2016 Curriculum Directors Conference and the GACES Fall Conference. It really begins on September the 20th on a Tuesday with training for new curriculum directors, and we have already had 87 uh, participants to register for the new Curriculum Directors and Leaders Day on September the 20th. That's an all-day 8.30 to 3.30 day on Tuesday in Athens at the Classic Center. And on Wednesday, September the 21st, as you can see, is our Godot Curriculum Directors Conference. And then on Thursday and Friday, the GACES Fall Conference. And if you have the PowerPoint, you can click there to register for those conferences. We look forward to seeing you there. And I'm going to, I don't see that Deborah White is signed in yet on my list, so I'm going to move on to the next slides and we want to welcome her back if she comes on. But I do want to make a shout out. Our superintendent is going to be there at on September 21st to provide opening remarks. We're going to have uh, professional learning for our new Georgia Standards of Excellence for Science and Social Studies. We'll also be talking about Teaks and Leaks with Cindy Saxon and we'll have uh, PBIS and then we'll have um, virtual learning, virtual field trips, Khan Academy and more. So we're really excited about those opportunities. And I know Deborah White is bringing in Michael Fullen who is a, a worldwide authority on educational reform and she will have a book, his latest book that's out. So we're really looking forward to that and leading for coherence is the title of the GACES conference. And Dr. Melissa Fincher will also be there giving the latest updates for our Georgia Milestones program. So we look forward to seeing you there. And uh, so if you haven't registered, please go on and let us know uh, that you're going to be there and, and um, on the, the week of especially Wednesday through Friday. And if you are a new curriculum director or leader and new in your system or uh, just brand new, please let me know and I'll be glad to help you. You can, you can uh, email me and I'll have my contact information available later. But um, let us know if you're interested in that training on September the 20th. Thank you so much. Now I'm moving into the State Board of Education updates. As you know, through our newsletters, we, we regularly every month provide us an update just from the curriculum area. 
and this month it, we talked about the State Board approved the posting of the rule, it's the awarding units of credit rule and acceptance of transfer credit and grades, and it's posted right now for 30 days of public review and comment, and it will go before the board in September for approval while we're at the GACES conference actually on September 22nd. And I don't know if you know that when a rule is approved, it sits on the table for 20 days after approval before we can post it on our policy page. So sometimes when a rule has been approved, I will get emails asking about the new rule and, and where can they find it. So you can always email me and I can give you my, my copy, but they won't officially post it for 20 days after the board adopts any amendments to a rule and there's the link there and mainly the, the biggest updates for that rule is that we're looking at the assessment language and updating from end of course test to just end of course and changing our title of our dual enrollment rule that was done last month which was approved the dual enrollment move on when ready so that rule and just updating terminology for math the different course titles so this is a cleanup for this rule and look forward to having that and I know that some of you might want to revise your policies and local policies um, as you do that so our other rules Randy if you're on Randy Lee the other yes, rules, on. thank you Randy you want to talk about your two rules Yes, uh, thank you, Pam. Um, the uh, State Board of Education uh, adopted the rule amendments. They used to be called learning resources and textbook rules. Uh, we've changed the name of the two rules to uh, include instructional materials selection and recommendation and instructional materials selection and advisory uh, committee. Basically, as a result of House Bill 739, the wording uh, change from the DOE shall do textbook or instruction materials review to the phrase DOE may. And at this point in time, the Georgia Department of Education uh, does not, and we do not anticipate that the Georgia Department of Education will be involved in the review process. We're going to be in a support process because all locally, uh, uh, all instruction materials, textbooks, digital, hard print, is now going to be left up to the local uh, school system to have your own review process and and of course your own uh, approval process. Uh, we will be here as we always are the DOE to simply add support if you need documents or if you need me to come and speak with you or a telephone conference or a webinar or actually visit your system as I have already for a couple of systems that are looking at doing a selection of materials this school year, uh, please um, please let me know. Just be mindful now that you're probably your textbook people, your instructional people are going to receive many many uh, communications from publishers because now the publishers are going to have to go directly to the local school systems to, uh, to ha and try to convince you that their product is the best product for your student and for your school system. Uh, Pam, do you have the point two zero? Next slide, please. Yeah, the point two zero. Uh, again, the name changed. This simply says that uh, we will still have an instructional materials advisory committee if the state board of education and if the superintendent elect elect to participate in a process. Again, the wording is changed from shall to may. Uh, we still have all the provisions in, in, in place which provide for the lowest price and the guarantee of the product. So this, this bill says if the decision is made later on that the DOE and the school board wants to participate or is asked to participate in a review of materials, then we already have everything in place that we need to do uh, and nothing's basically changed. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Randy Lee. And now Jessica Booth, our Fine Arts Program Specialist, will talk to us a little bit about STEAM. Jessica? Pam, you'll need to unmute her.
Good morning. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about two major fine arts initiatives we have uh, this school year. One you've probably heard of a little bit about already is our STEAM Georgia certification program. If you could switch the slides. Um, in, and in addition to our existing STEM certification program, which has been very, very popular the last three years, we have created a companion STEAM certification. Um, it's not going to be enough for our students to just be the smartest students or the smartest adults in the room. They're going to need to be creative and innovative and be able to have skills that are not necessarily a skill set that we were taught when we were going through school ourselves. Um, by adding the arts, we're trying to keep America as an innovator in our uh, kind of expanding global world. If you can go to the next slide. The existing STEM certification still exists, and there's still schools that are going to go through the STEM certification process, and they're in that timeline or pipeline. Um, we will additionally have a STEAM certification. The STEAM certification includes an embedded STEM certification, so they are um, one in the same for the STEAM certification, so a school that is considered STEAM is also considered STEM certified. Um, and then we additionally have an arts add-on certification visit for schools that have already been certified as a STEM school um, in the last few years by the state of Georgia. Um, we have many schools that are currently interested in adding the arts portion to be STEAM certified as well. Um, all the information about the current STEAM um, certification program, which is, again, very similar to the current STEM certification program, are on a website that will be uh, in the next few slides. If you could uh, switch the slide again. The other big uh, fine arts initiative that we have this year is the Fine Arts Diploma Seal. Uh, next slide. I think a lot of people don't realize that the creative industries in Georgia have become a $29 billion sector of our economy. Um, we are now the third largest producer of films in the world, and that is only set to get bigger and bigger. We are also a huge hub for web design, graphic arts, and music, the music recording industry. Um, in order to get students prepared to take roles in that this creative economy. Um, we created the Fine Arts Diploma Seal as a signal to employers and to higher ed that these students are ready to participate in that uh, robust economic sector. If you could switch the slide. Thank you. Um, on, the web, on our Fine Arts website, which you'll get the link in just a second, there are step-by-step -step guides of how to um, apply to be able to award the Fine Arts Diploma Seal. It consists of students completing a, fine arts, a Georgia Fine Arts pathway, which currently is three courses in a fine arts subject area, which would be music, visual arts, theater, or dance. They also are required to take either a fourth course in a CTAE course that has been considered a creative industry skill course or a fourth fine arts course. Um, they're also involved in extracurricular activities related to fine arts and the creative industries, and um, they all, including community partnerships and 20 hours of community service that is fine arts related. If you could go to the next slide. The timeline for being able to award as an individual high school the fine arts diploma seal for graduating seniors is uh, an application process by December 15th. We have whole district applications, where if the whole school district would like to apply as a district, they can. We also have individual high school applications, so that if just a particular high school would like to offer the seal, those applications are due to me by December 15th. Um, off of uh, Pam Smith's uh, curriculum instruction website is the Fine Arts website. Uh, that's kind of a quick link to uh, that page in particular where you can download all of these items, including the brochures and a little PowerPoint webinar about how to fill out the application. Um, by February, we'll notify schools that are going to be able to award the seals. And then uh, while you're trying to get your taxes together, you're also going to be sending me the list of candidates who have received the seal for your school. And we will be sending you the seals to apply to uh, uh, their uh, graduation uh, diplomas um, before the ceremony. Uh, 
That's really our two big initiatives for the school year. I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, my email is at the bottom of the page. And um, I'm available by phone all the time as well. Thanks. Thank you so much, Jessica. And Michaela Claus Nix, who is our program specialist for world language, was unable to join us today, but she wanted to put in a slide about the International Skills Diploma Seal. And as Jessica was just talking about the Fine Arts uh, Seal, this is also December fifteenth uh, that we're, we'll, we will be accepting applications to become eligible to award that seal to our students. And um, you can check out the website for Michaela Claus for world language, and you can find out more details for that and down download the application form and any other questions that you have, please email Michaela for those questions. Our advanced placements um, with Becky Chambers, Georgia McSwain, and, and Bonnie Marshall, I'm going to, I'm not sure I'm seeing them on the list, so I'm going to, um, Becky, are you on? Uh, Becky's with Gail Humble. Pam, uh, if you will unmute Gail Humble. Becky's sitting next to Gail. Thank you so much, Randy. Becky, thank you. Hey, I'm here. This is Becky Chambers. And we just wanted to touch base. Uh, you guys who are our wonderful curriculum directors, like the slide says, you wear many hats. And many of you, I know, serve as your AP system contact. Uh, but I want to make sure we have everybody. We think we still have a few systems that have never given us the uh, contact information for their AP system coordinator. So if you've not been receiving emails from me this month, I've sent out several pretty important ones to AP system contacts, it means we don't have you on our listserv. So if you would please email your name and your system email address to Georgia McSwain. You see it right there on the slide gmcswain at doe.k12.ga.us. It is fine for a system to have several contacts regarding AP. We do not mind putting in several names for a system. So if you would like to be copied on that AP system information, even though you're not primary, we are happy to add you to this listserv. And I want to thank you so much for all the things that you do for us. That's got it for me, Pam. Thank you so much, Becky. And I've just got to say, this is Becky's last webinar with us. She is retiring on August the 31st, so I'm not sure we're going to let her out the door. We're going to try to tie her down in the office or hide her in one of the closets. But Becky has given many years, um, over 40 years to public education and as a teacher, a high school principal and now was our program manager for our college and career readiness, and we are certainly going to miss her. And uh, so we want to wish her well as she goes out into the world of retirement, and I hope she stays connected with education because she has sur surely and is, continues to be an asset to our public education system. Thank you so much, Becky. And now I'll turn it over to Gail Humble, who is our gifted program specialist. Gail? Good morning. Um, I am Gail Hummel. I do work with the Gifted Program um, here in Georgia. And I wanted to call your attention to a group of meetings that we're going to have um, over the next few weeks, uh, starting August 30th at Pioneer Risa. I'm really looking forward to meeting with all the district uh, coordinators and directors of Gifted Programs. We um, talk about the gifted program. We talk, we talk about the guidelines. We will talk about um, how systems might be waiving the guidelines or using their opportunities for flexibility with their guidelines for the gifted program. That will certainly be one of our topics. But our focus will continue to be um, identification of underrepresented populations, especially uh, with our low income population looking uh, to see how we can help develop talent with those students who perhaps haven't had the opportunities and the experiences um, to develop those talents. We're also going to look at the development of creativity this school year. Um, as you um, heard Jessica talk about, we definitely need to develop creativity for innovation um, while we all recognize that we want our children, our students, to master uh, standards. 
uh, to be able to do well as they uh, go through school. We also recognize that we need to develop the talent for creativity so that we have innovative citizens as they go out into the world. So I'm looking forward to seeing um, all you folks at those fall meetings. I'm looking forward to hearing from you and really appreciate your willingness to share what's going on in your district so we can all learn together. Thank you, Pam. Thank you so much, Gail. And now I'll turn it over to Juan Carlos Aguilar, our science program manager. Thank you, Pam, and good morning, everyone. I just wanted to share with you, sorry, share with you some uh, information very quickly about uh, what we are going to be doing during the fall of this uh, 2016 school year. Uh, first, this is the information about the Science Ambassador Program. Uh, as you may know, we have completed days one and two, and we have about 340 participants in the program. Uh, I would like to thank you, thank uh, Liberty County, Houston County, Forsyth County, and Walton County for their willingness to share the facilities with us and allow us to be there to complete days three and four of the Science Ambassador Program workshops. Um, the next thing that I wanted to share with you was the list of webinars that are actually targeted to all of you, curriculum directors, school administrators, or uh, district administrators. We have completed the first one of this series, and the webinar and PowerPoint is now archived, and you can find it in the Science Georgia Department of Education webpage. If you go to the bottom of that page, you will see the links to uh, those two documents, both the archive webinar and the PowerPoint that was shared at that time. Here are also the links. If you don't have them, we send this information uh, a couple of, uh, I think a couple of weeks or about three weeks ago, the links to register for the upcoming webinars that we will held in October, November, December, and January. We will try to do one every month. And as I said in that, um, at that time when we did the first webinar, if necessary, we will add um, anything else that needs to be uh, talked about later on in 2016, actually 17. Um, the next thing that I wanted to share with you is, is some, uh, no changes, but some clarifications that need to be uh, made clear to all our counselors about Move On When Ready and science. Uh, as you know, we have several science courses that count as dual enrollment, and some of those uh, courses, I'm sorry, all of those courses also count as a for science for graduation purposes. However, in the past, we have run into the problem that some of those dual enrollment courses at the college level are aligned to the high school course. So, for example, uh, biology at the college level is aligned to our high school biology. This has created some difficulties for our students as they cannot receive, in theory, double credit for the same course. So, we have worked with the college, um, with the um, Board of Regions and the Technical College System of Georgia to solve this issue. And the solution that we have come up with is described here. Um, when a college course is aligned to both an actual high school course, um, then a dual enrollment number will be assigned and will be requested by the higher ed institution. So a student that takes that college course can receive a four science credit. And you can see here the requirements that are necessary to complete that. Uh, I put here a couple of scenarios as examples of what we are talking about. In the first scenario, you have a student that took high school biology in ninth grade and then went to college and took biology, whatever, 101 or whatever college uh, title you have. Now, because that biology was aligned to the high school course, now that student should receive credit for high school biology normal and the dual enrollment number should be assigned to the biology 
101, the college biology, and that college biology now counts as the four signs. Another scenario would be this student did not have to take biology one in, in, in high school, so the student went directly to college and took biology uh, 101. In this case, that course, because that is course is aligned to the high school course, that course should receive the high school credit for biology one. So those are the two scenarios that we're trying to clarify with this uh, clarification in the rule for move on already. Hopefully this will help our students that are taking uh, high school courses and uh, college courses and they are, they are equivalent to the high school courses that they took as they moved through high school. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Juan Carlos. And we will turn this now over to Joy Hatcher, who is our Social Studies Program Manager. So we want to congratulate Joy for that. Um, she was our Program Specialist. And Sean Owens has now moved into a Director's position in Federal Programs and Consolidated Applications. So uh, congratulations to Sean and congratulations to Joy. Joy, I'll turn the uh, mic over to you. Thank you, Pam. Good morning, everyone. I wanted to give you some updates today on uh, social studies this year. First, I want to mention that this year is still a GPS year. Your teachers should be teaching the Georgia Performance Standards K through 12. The Georgia Standards of Excellence won't go into effect until 2017-18. We're going to post those standards in September, partly to avoid confusion. And when we post those, we'll also post a uh, crosswalk from the GPS to the Georgia Standards of Excellence. And we'll post a transition plan from third to fifth grade, since there was some movement in the standards there. That transition plan should occur in 2017-18, however, not this year. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to share with you our uh, exciting new resource that is available right now, and that is the virtual specialist. Um, we have um, attempted to connect teachers across the state that teach the same content um, and grade level, and we're doing that in two ways. The virtual specialist will host a monthly webinar that is live uh, in the um, afternoons, uh, K through 12 and they will cover uh, topics regarding instructional activities, um, content. The focus this year will be to um, uh, inform best practices in social studies classrooms. Um, and teachers can ask questions and future webinars will focus on topics that teachers choose from around the state. The second piece of that is a professional learning platform um, on EdWeb, which is a free uh, social network for educators. Your teachers will need to sign up using their district, county, RISA, or DOE email. You're welcome to join any or all of them as well. Uh, and those platforms uh, will serve as a communication tool for teachers across the state. So fifth grade teachers in Forsyth County can be talking to teachers in Grady County teaching the same subjects, sharing lesson plans, sharing successes, and um, getting support. Um, I want to take you very quickly to the social studies page on gadoe.org. This is where you can find the uh, most up-to-date information, the latest and greatest about social studies. There are two links here I want to point you to. This paragraph kind of describes the virtual specialist resource. And if you click here, there is information uh, on how to join EdWeb using your um, educator's email address and how to find your specific online community. They all start with GADOE. So if you just search communities for GADOE, you can find everything from grades uh, K through high school. And then to find out when the monthly webinars are for your specific subject or grade level you can click this link and it will have the date and time for each of the webinars the link to uh, join the webinar and register and then when the re webinar is finished you'll see a sentence uh, that says the webinar is ended and then a YouTube link so you can watch that webinar later if you were not able to attend it live so again um, 
GADOE.org, the social studies page there, is how you would access this information. And I'll also post links to any new resources on this page. I also want to point out that we are now on social media, both Twitter and Facebook. And so I send out messages there frequently uh, about new resources, professional learning, workshops for teachers, etc. Everything that you might need to know about um, social studies in Georgia. So that's what's going on right now. What is coming soon? We have some new exciting resources for our teachers. First is our social studies labs, which are inquiry-based lessons that include primary and secondary documents. They include uh, instructional activities and summative activities, and that's K through 12. There will be about seven of those per course or or grade level. We're going to have on t online content videos uh, for your teachers that need uh, some extra support in the specific content related to the new Georgia Standards of Excellence. We're going to have college level videos, uh, 10 to 15 minutes, about specific um, standards and elements to support the teachers. We'll also have online instructional activity videos. So these are tutorial videos, uh, screencasts. All of these are created by Georgia educators uh, who are leaders in their uh, respective schools and communities. Uh, there will be about 17 videos per content and grade level um, for those as well. We're going to update our teacher notes to reflect the changes uh, in the Georgia Standards of Excellence. And as opposed to uh, what we have now, which is teacher notes for 4th through 8th grade U.S. History and Economics, our teacher notes will now start in kindergarten and they'll go through all of the core high school courses, including American government, world geography, and world history. So we're very excited about that. And all those will be updated um, this spring to reflect Georgia standards of excellence. And then finally, we're going to update our frameworks to reflect our change and our shift towards inquiry uh, in the social studies classroom. Uh, similar to science, we will also have some face-to-face -face trainings this fall. Uh, you should have received an email, and we sent it out um, again last week for the social studies leadership training, which will occur in September and October across the state. Uh, each district uh, is allowed to send two leaders, and these are the people that are responsible for rolling out the Georgia Standards of Excellence in their area. And then we're going to have teacher trainings uh, in the month of June uh, 2017, and we will have more information about that coming soon. If you have any questions, um, feel free to contact me. My information is on the social studies page on GADOE.org, and I look forward to meeting you all. Thank you so much, Joy. Uh, we look forward to all of that wonderful work that's coming toward us to help us support our new social studies Georgia Standards of Excellence. And as you may guess, one of our most frequently asked questions that we get from parents and um, some teachers even, even before school began was when were the Georgia Standards of Excellence going to be implemented? And that's next school year, of course, the 2017-8, as Joy has written in her slides. Our ELA um, program uh, manager Stephanie Sanders was unable to join us today, but she wanted to remind you about the Things to Consider webinar um, that's on collaborative conversations for building a culture of writing. And this series will begin in September, and there will be more information coming because September is right upon us, and that happens next week. But this uh, series, this Building a Culture of Writing series, will be in three tiers for teachers, for schools and districts, and our RESAs that will help them customize and help you customize your professional learning needs in your district. And there's also a recorded session that you can listen to, and th that information will be coming from Stephanie Sanders, but she wanted to make sure that I reminded you on the webinar. So look for that in the coming days, and we will get more information out to you through after this webinar, too, so that we can send you some additional links to that. And we have just been joined by our superintendent, Mr. Richard Woods, and our deputy superintendent, Dr. Caitlin Dooley. And I was going to offer them an opportunity to talk about uh, some public hearings that are coming up. And I'm going to move to a slide for that. And, and now come back to our mathematics in just one second.
Okay, well, uh, good morning. This is uh, Superintendent Woods. Uh, again, thank you for your participation today. But uh, uh, last night we did have our first uh, uh, ESSA meeting uh, on uh, in Augusta, or uh, Augusta in, in Columbia County. And uh, next week we actually, I believe, have two. We have uh, on August 29, we have Habersham County at uh, Piedmont College. And on September 1st, we'll be in Darty County uh, at uh, Darty County Comprehensive High School. And, and we'll you know begin to share these out. But uh, again, the big thing with uh, the ESSA public hearings and again uh, you know this is you know a uh highly valuable for us and again we want to encourage you to be an active part and participant with that so that we can hear from you and again you in the field because we're here to serve you and to make sure that the plan that we create will be something that is reflective of our needs in Georgia and what we can do to really move our, our kids forward uh, with that so uh, you know we're very very happy with that but also I you know, would like to just uh, you know a big shout out on our commitment for literacy as well um, there again we have a K-5 foundational skills uh, something that is extremely important and uh, you know I think uh, for myself as a high school teacher what I fully understood is that if we don't get K-5 right uh, it makes our job you know down the line much harder so I do appreciate the work that you're doing I uh, wish you have a great school year and if I or the staff can be of help uh, please feel free to reach out to us and uh, thank you very much Wow, that was a special treat. Thank you so much, Superintendent Woods. We sure appreciate your time. And he will be opening our session, remember, at our fall conference on September the 21st. So we look forward to that. Now I'm going to go back a little bit and turn this over to Sandy Woodall, our Mathematics Program Manager. Sandy? Sandy, all right. I've unmuted you now. Sandy? Yes, thank you, Pam, and um, our superintendent is kind of a hard act to follow, but I'll do my best. I'm excited this morning to acquaint our curriculum directors with our 2016-17 mathematics program plan. I, I'm sure all of you know that we've just completed our initial year of GSE mathematics across our state. And what that does is allow us this year to focus on standards that have been proven to be difficult to interpret or challenging to teach. So that will be our focus in 1617. Our process begins with identifying those challenging content standards. And we really hope that every teacher in our statewide math educator community is able to participate. We will distribute grade level and course surveys directly to teachers via our DOE educator email list. And that's going to happen early in September. However, as always, we will appreciate any assistance you can give us to ensure that every educator in your district who teaches mathematics, kindergarten through grade 10, has the opportunity to weigh in. Our participants will actually be asked to select up to five standards on which they would welcome additional support. So at each grade level, we could be looking at up to five standards that are somewhat challenging. Our next step will be the establishment of a 22-member statewide task force charged with designing and delivering five brief professional learning segments for each grade level, segments that will target specific standards and will capture effective instructional strategies. We'll be distributing those nomination forms for the project task force in a few weeks. And one final comment, I know Becky mentioned to you that if you are interested in AP updates to please let her know. If you will, send an email to me with your contact information if you would like to be included on our math, our district math supervisor roster. Thanks again for all you do. Please don't hesitate to let either Brooke Klein or me know when we can help you. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Sandy, for that update. And Deborah White, our Executive Director for our Georgia Association for Curriculum and Instructional Supervisors, has joined us. And Deborah, I'm going to unmute your mic so that you can uh, give a shout out for the, the conference. We've talked a little bit about it this morning, but we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Deborah. Can you hear me, Deborah? She may not be Pam, able to. You there? Yes, yes. Pam, are you? No, but thank you, Pam, for this opportunity. I apologize. I had some problems on my end. I'm getting on, and so I'm sure that you've already covered a lot of information about the conference. But I would just like to first of all say that we greatly appreciate the partnership with the Georgia Department of Education in working with our new curriculum leaders as well as in planning our upcoming fall conference. We're very excited to have Michael Fullen as our keynote speaker on September the 22nd. It has been over seven years since Michael Fullen has presented here in Georgia, so this is a wonderful opportunity for you to hear this author and uh, speaker who is known throughout the world for school reform and change. And he will be speaking from approximately 8.30 in the morning until 12, so it will be a great opportunity to learn with him. And he will also be doing a book signing that afternoon. We will be giving a, new co a copy of his new book, Coherence as part of the registration, so you will have an opportunity to get his autograph if you so choose. Um, um, the afternoon of September the 22nd, we will have 11 of your peers who will be presenting leadership activities that they're doing within their schools that they have found successful and sharing best practices. Um, Friday morning, September the 23rd, we will start with Melissa Fincher, and she will be giving us some updates on milestones, also talking about SB 364 and ESSA. So this is a great opportunity to get an update on what is happening in the world of assessment. And following Melissa, we will have an additional 11 opportunities for you to work with people from across the state in best practice sessions. And I am assuming, Pam, that you covered the new curriculum leaders program. I did. When um, you began. Yes. Okay. We'll... So I will not. I will not repeat that information. But we're excited about that. We have over 80 people already registered, and I um, would like to encourage people who have less than three years of experience. GASIS will be once again sponsoring a year-long program that will support you throughout the year if you're a new curriculum leader. And we will give you more information about that on Tuesday, September the 20th. Thank you so much, Deborah. We really appreciate uh, your participation in this webinar to give us that information. And I hope every, we see everyone at the fall conference. The, we're at the last slide now. And I just want to uh, Hal Beaver from the Georgia Association for Elementary School Principals and Bob Heberlin from the Georgia Association for Middle School Principals has asked me if I wouldn't mind reminding you or to push out to your principals about the fall conference in Savannah at the Savannah Riverfront Marriott. So there's more information on the Gale website for that and they can register now for that conference in October. And we've already gone over, uh oh, I clicked off the uh, PowerPoint slide somehow, but um, sorry. Randy, I'm going to turn the mic over to you and let you close us out. Thank you so much, everyone, for your participation, and again, look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah. Thank you, Pam. Uh, appreciate it. Great information. Uh, we did add a few extra slides uh, that, uh, that are added to this PowerPoint that we put in the handout sections. If any of you need uh, those additional 
uh, PowerPoint slides, please email me, uh, rlee at doe.k12.ga.us. I put the information in the chat room I sent to everyone, and I'll be glad to send you uh, another set of the PowerPoint documents that we used. This concludes our recording session. Pam, you can click off the stop recording, but I need everyone to X out and go ahead and close out and uh, remove themselves from the webinar. Thank you so much. Have a great school year and a great day.